All right, so we are back today to do the sewing up of the sides and adding a little section to connect our two back panel or our two panels. Um, you're going to be choosing which panel you want to be your back panel, and that's the one that we're going to work two more rows of the same exact pattern that we're then going to connect to your front panel. Then we'll be sewing up the sides and adding the border all in this one tutorial. So I wanted to show you guys, this is a mini version that I did for the tutorial so I could show you all how to do the rest of it. This is my two panels, and I'm going to be choosing one of these to be the back panel. For this particular um, piece, I use the um, Premier D Everyday DK Colors, and the colorway that I used on this, it's uh, 382 yards, just in case anybody's wondering, still a size 3. The color that I used is called do, 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 Tulip. So it's a really pretty color. As you can see here, it's got these light pinks and kind of almost like a light salmon color or like a deep rose. And then it's got this more of a purplish along with more of like a magenta fading into the cream. So I ended up with two panels that are completely different colors in this case. I only had one ball of this or I would have done some color control and blended it a little bit better, but this is going to be one for one of my nieces, so it will work out just fine. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You're going to need a yarn needle and you are going to need a four millimeter hook. So you're going to go down one size hook for doing the border on this. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have chosen this particular panel to be my back panel. So you've been working in a direction where you started down here, right here, and you've been working up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip your panel over and what was your bottom becomes the top again. And on all sizes, the way that you're going to begin doing the connection of your back panel to your front panel is going to be you're going to grab a stitch marker and you are going to work over here from the left side right here. You are going to mark over. You're going to count this as one repeat two repeats and you're going to mark right here at the end of the second repeat. So you're counting one cluster, two clusters of the pretty, uh, I guess, butterfly looking piece. So you're going to count one butterfly, two butterfly, and then you're going to mark over here at the end of your second repeat on the butterflies. So for all sizes, that's how you're going to mark this to begin doing the connection we're going to be crocheting this way over. In my case, I do not have a long piece, but you will. You are going to have approximately on most of the sizes, you're going to have four of these sections right here. You're going to count over. There'll be four of those that you're going to work and do a short panel in order to do the connection. So in this case, in all of the sizes, you are going to go from your left side, count over one, two, and then mark right here on this chain. We're going to be going right here on this double crochet. So we have two full repeats of our pattern going to the side. So we're going to go ahead and mark that with any stitch marker. I'm going to grab mine, which of course I have my handy dandy paper clip as usual. Those are just easier for me to use than the ones that close. So that's why I always use those in my tutorials if anybody's wondering. So you're going to mark just in the top of that double crochet, just like this, and that's going to be your stopping point. So you're opening what I like to call the head hole, but what others would call the neck opening is going to land between this part of the panel. You're going to grab your other panel and just so that you know exactly where you're going to be attaching. You're going to go ahead and mark it as well on the other panel. So these two panels, when they are together, and there's a section of crochet, there'll be two rows right here. This is going, to, is going to create the opening for where you're going to place your head. So that's your neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this one, and then we're going to get started with how we add on the additional section. So you want to grab your panels, mark both of them, just so you know exactly how it's going to be lining up. So I'm going to count one, two, and then right here in the double crochets, this last one is where I'm going to mark, just like so. 
Okay, so then we're going to move back to our back panel. We're going to work on that. For all of you guys doing yours, you're going to have several more repeats. You're going to have a total of four because on the one size fits most small to um, 2X, there's a total, if you count your butterflies across the row, there's a total of six of those. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to use two of them for our opening and our neckline. That's going to be the same on all of the plus sizes as well that go up the 3X to 6X. You are still going to be marking from the left side over and mark here for the second um, repeat. And that's where your head is going to come through the piece. So you will have, in your cases, if you did the larger sizes, you're going to have, you know, six or eight more butterflies and that's going to be where you're working so go ahead and get your piece marked and we're going to come back and we'll lower the camera so you can see what i'm doing so now we're back and we're going to be using the same five millimeter hook to add this little section that we're going to use as our connecting section we're going to use the same exact hook that we've been using to do that so you're going to grab your five millimeter hook here you're going to be dropping down to the four millimeter when you do your border so we're going to go ahead and do our piece to connect and to do that we're going to move over to the right side of your project so you've marked over here from the left moving towards the right to do the opening for the neckline and now you're going to move over here with your yarn and you're going to go to the right side and we're going to start right here at the very first double crochet so you're going to count up and make sure that you've got a double crochet if you have a chain here you're just going to count up to the top of the third chain and that's where you're going to go in in my case i have a double crochet here so i'm going to go ahead and insert into the top of that which i have knotted down really really well so i'm going to fight with it for just a second here do to do do and we're going to insert and we're going to add our yarn here so we're going to grab our yarn and do a slip knot and put it on our hook and then we're going to pull it through just like that now we're going to do a chain just to lock that in place and now you're going to be crocheting exactly in the same manner that you have been doing the entire time you're going to start by doing a chain four two three and four we already had one chain because we chained it to lock it in place so that can act as our first chain so i've got chain i chained four and now i'm going to go over here to the top of the double crochet and i'm going to insert my hook and i'm going to do a double crochet just like that and now this next chain four begins our repeat just like it's been doing throughout this project same exact way we're going to chain four one two three and four and now we're moving over here and we're going to be working on the opposite side moving in the opposite direction of what we've been doing so if you look right here you see where you did your um, double crochet chain two double crochet chain two double crochet chain two double crochet you're going to do the exact same thing right there in the back end of that stitch so it's all stretched out because we were working in it so we're just going to go right there into that and do a double crochet. Now we're going to chain two, one and two. We're going to go back down to that same loop and do another double crochet. Just like so. And we're going to continue to do that just like we were doing when we were creating our panels. We're going to keep doing that right there in that same loop until we have the three chain two spaces. So I'm going to chain two again, and I'm going to go back in one more time. And this is what we have so far. So we're just working in the opposite direction now. So now we're going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to move over just like we've been doing to the double crochet chain one double crochet section so we're skipping over this chain and we're coming right here into the top of this double crochet and we're going to do a double crochet right there in the top of that stitch oops lost my loop so we're going to do a double crochet chain one and a double crochet working right there in the top of the same exact stitches just on the opposite side and that ends the repeat so you're going to continue on down in the same exact manner until you've met up with your stitch marker so I'm going to do this with you one more time one two three 
and four. And we're moving over here and we see our butterfly below. We're going to work into this large loop that we've created from working into that stitch. We're going to do a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet, chain two, going right back down here in the same loop. It's really loose looking, but it just fades away in your project, believe me. And we're going to do a double crochet. And we're going to do that one more time because we need three of those double crochet chain two loops. We need three of the loops. So we're going right there in that same exact stitch. And it's really just a loop at this point. So we're working right there. But if you look at it, you're just working on the opposite side of your butterfly that you created down here. And now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're now over here, in my case, to my stitch marker. For most of you, you're going to continue on doing your double crochet, chain, and then double crochet until you meet up with your stitch marker. But once you do meet with your stitch marker, you will be carrying on by doing just a double crochet right there into the top of that double crochet from the previous row. And let's make sure we're nice and straight here. So we're just going to go right there into that same spot with a double crochet. So we're doing a double crochet right on top of the double crochet from that previous row. And then we're going to end right there. So you're going to continue on and you're going to work until you get down here to your stitch marker. And then you're just going to do one double crochet right there into the top of where that stitch marker is stopping you. And then that's going to be the end of your row. And we'll go ahead and move up to the next row. We're going to do this twice. We're going to do two full repeats. So a total of four rows in order to connect your back panel of your poncho to the front panel. So you can go ahead and pause here and work on down. And you can meet back up with me and do this last little double crochet. And then we'll move forward. All right, so we're back, and what we're going to be doing here is you've met at the end of your row. You have your stitch marker down here. You've worked one double crochet right there into the top of that um, previous double crochet from the previous row. And we're going to chain six to start our next row. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's chain five. I think that will work out better for you guys. So chain five. One, two, three three, four, and five. So the first three are going to act as our double crochet. Um, then we have the chain two. So we're going to go ahead and chain five and then turn our work. And you're going to come down here and you're going to be skipping two stitches just like you were doing before. And you're going to go into that third stitch. So leaving one stitch in between you and the double crochet over here. So we're going to go in there and we're going to do a single crochet. Just like that. Now, without chaining anything, we're going to go ahead and do a double crochet right here into this double crochet because we've made it to this section. So we're going to do a double crochet right there into that double crochet. Now we're going to do three double crochets into the chain two loop. One, two, and three. And now we're going to do a double crochet into this double crochet from the previous row. And now we're over here to this chain two loop. So we're going to do one double crochet right into that. Now we're going to chain two. And we're going to go back into that same exact space and do another double crochet. So right there in that chain two space. And now we're going to go ahead and do a double crochet in the very next double crochet. Now here we are at our chain two space again. We're going to go ahead and do three double crochets right into that. There's one, two, and three. And now we're going to do a double crochet right here into this double crochet from the previous row. It's the last one in that section. And we're going to come down here and we are going to skip one stitch and go right here into the next with a single crochet to lock that down. So just like we were doing 
on the other side we're just doing that now in reverse this is what your work looks like so far so now we're going to go ahead and chain two one and two and we're going to move over here after I get out some more yarn we are going to move over here to our double crochet chain one double crochet and we are going to do a double crochet right there on the top of that double crochet We're going to chain one and we're going to do a double crochet right there into the top of that double crochet. And that ends your repeat. You're going to be continuing on in the same exact manner and we're going to do it one more time together. So I'm going to chain two. That's the beginning of our repeat. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to skip two stitches and go into the third with a single crochet. Now, without chaining anything, I'm going to go ahead and do a double crochet right here into this first double crochet. See, I've made it to this section where we have our double crochet chain two loops. So, I'm just going to go ahead and work right into that double crochet and do a double crochet. Now, I'm in the chain two loop. I'm going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Oops. Now I'm going to do a double crochet right here into this double crochet. And now I'm back here in this chain two space. It's the center one. We're going to go ahead and do a double crochet right there into that space. Now we're going to chain two. And we're going to come over here into this same exact chain two space and do a double crochet. Now we're going to go here and do a double crochet in the very next double crochet from the previous row. Now we're over here at the chain two space again, so we're going to go ahead and do three double crochets right into that space. One, two, and three, and I'm going to get some more yarn. And now I'm going to do a double crochet right here in this very last double crochet in this section. I'm going to do, whoops, a double crochet. And now I'm going to skip one stitch and go right here into the second and do a single crochet. And now I'm going to chain two and you're going to carry on in the same exact manner and finish out the rest of your little butterflies is what we'll call them. So you, I've got two here. You're going to have two more than me because on most or at least on most of the sizes. And you'll just finish out and meet up where you had your stitch marker before. That's now the end of your row. So we're going to go ahead and finish that out together. We're going to chain two. And I'm going to do a, I'm here at the end of my row. So I'm going to do a double crochet chain one double crochet and I'm going to count up one two three stitches from the bottom down there and I'm going to make sure that I go into the top of the third stitch this is just like what you've been doing on down the entire project same exact thing we're now on that side so now you're going to continue on on your project until you get here into your last set of double crochet chain one double crochet and then at that point, you're going to come back and meet up with me and we'll go on to do the setup row and the final row. There's a total of four that we're going to be making to do our connection. All right, so we are back and we're going to be doing a chain four like we did any other time. So we're going to one, two, three, and four. We're going to chain four and then we're going to turn our work. And you're going to go right here, skipping over the single crochet, or I'm sorry, this chain space. You're going to skip over that chain, and you're going to go right here into the top of the double crochet and do a double crochet. And now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And now we're here at the butterfly, basically, that we've created. We're going to go ahead and do a double crochet. Chain two double crochet we're working right there in that chain two space so right there in the center of our butterfly that's where we're working just like we were doing on the back panels and or on the other two panels I should say um, we're gonna work in the same exact manner 
This is just the same thing, just in a much shorter little version so that we can use it to connect our two panels together. So we're gonna go ahead and chain two, and we're gonna come back into that same space, and we're gonna do a double crochet. And we're gonna do that one last time. We're gonna chain two, and we're gonna go back in that same exact space, and we're gonna do a double crochet. That's what we have so far. So now we're going to chain four again. This is the beginning of the repeat, or I'm sorry, this is not the beginning of the repeat. We're gonna chain four and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do a double crochet. We're gonna chain one and we're going to do a double crochet right there in the next double crochet. Now our repeat begins <laughs> with the chain four, one, two, three, and four. And now we're over here at the butterfly again. We're gonna work right here in this chain two space just like we did on the other, uh, when we were creating our two panels. We're gonna do a double crochet right there into that space. We're gonna chain two. We're gonna do a double crochet right there into that same space. We're gonna chain two. We're gonna do a double crochet again right there in that same space, and we're gonna chain two. And then we're gonna do our last double crochet right there into that same exact space. So that's what we have. Now we are going to chain four. One, two, three, and four and you're over here at the very end of your row, in my case. Most of you are gonna be continue on down. You've done, your you've done your chain four, and you're going to be doing a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chaining four again, repeating this section until you meet up at the end where you have just the one stitch left. So you can go ahead and pause here, and then you can come back when you've completed out all of your chain work and all to get to the end of your row. And for me, I'm going to continue on and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. So we've got a chain four on our hook and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to wrap my yarn like I'm ready to do a double crochet. And I'm going to look at these chains because this is the chain five space that we created. I'm going to count up one, two, and three. So I'm counting those chains. So there's one, here's two, and now I'm in the third one. And you're going to do your double crochet right there. And that's going to end out that row. Just like that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain up, you guessed it, five again. So there's three, four, and five. And now we're going to turn our work. And we're going to come down on our row here and we're going to skip over one, two, and three and go into the third. So we're skipping over two chains and going into the very third stitch so that there's one chain between you and this double crochet in this section. So we're gonna be working on that. We're gonna go ahead and do a double crochet right there in the top of that double crochet. So it's the same thing that we've been doing. We're just doing it in a manner that is short and we're not completing the entire row because we're gonna use that to connect our pieces, leaving an opening for our neckline so that we can put our heads in and actually wear the poncho. So you're gonna just continue on the same manner and then you're gonna meet back up with me when you have completed and you're down at the very end of your row. I think that we've gone over this enough that you guys know exactly what you're doing. You're doing this exactly twice or two full repeats. So you're doing four rows of this and then we need to meet back up so I can show you the last and final row that you're gonna do so that we can have something clean, a clean edge to connect to. Um, it makes it the most simple way for you to do this. So you're gonna pause here, finish out. You wanna do exactly two repeats. So a total of four rows of the same pattern that we've been working and you're gonna meet back up with me working in the same manner then we're going to meet back up and I'm going to show you the very last thing you have to do and then we will connect the panels together. All right, so you are meeting back up with me and we're going to do the very last row that we need to do before we connect our panels. So you're going to chain four just like you normally do. This is nothing different to start out this row. So we're going to chain four. And now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to do a double crochet right here into this double crochet. So we're skipping over that chain space and going right here. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do, this is where it does get different. This is the one row you're going to have to do this way. We're going to chain six instead of the four that we've been used to chaining. So we're going to chain one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're going to come over here to the center of our butterfly. We're going to, right here in this chain two space, we're going to do a single crochet. Now we're going to chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're back over here to our double crochet, chain one double crochet section, the little squares that we're making. You're going to complete those exactly as normal. You're going to do a double crochet, chain one, and another double crochet. So nothing changes for those right there not a change at all now the same thing we're going to do we're going to do our repeat again as beginning you're going to chain six do a single crochet in the top of the butterfly in that chain two space let me move that out of your way so we're going to chain six single crochet chain six do the double crochet chain one double crochet chain six and continue on down in the same exact manner until you have completed your row and then you're going to meet back up with me at the end and I'll show you what to do. So you've met back up with me. We're at the end of your row. And you're going to chain six just like you were doing on this row. Because we're just making a foundation for something that we can work into to connect the two rows. So you're down here at the end. You've got a chain six on your hook. And you're going to go down here to this chain five. And you're going to count up just like we were doing before to the third stitch. So I'm down here is one. Here is two, and right there is three. And we're going to go into that third stitch. So one, two, and three. And we're going to do, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do a double crochet right there into that third stitch. And that's going to finish out your row. So this gives you something nice and clean to connect to. Otherwise, we would have been trying to struggle with just connecting in the centers of the butterflies. So that's why we've added this last little finishing row so that we have a nice clean edge that we can stitch to when we're sewing our panels together. So at this point, what you can do is you can go ahead and grab your other panel and we're going to lay it out with the flat straight side so our original beginning chain we're going to match that up to your panel so that you're going to work in the same exact manner as you have been you are going to or your work is going to lay in the same manner as it has been um, you're going to match up your two panels and line them up and then you're going to look and you should have a stitch marker right here in this stitch that's going to line up with the edge of this piece that we've created so that when we fold this over you can connect the two pieces so let's take a look at that real quick together so you've got it lined up where your stitch markers are lining up down here and if you look at your piece you're going to have your neck opening down over here towards the left so from here over is going to be your neck opening. This is what's going to be on your shoulder. So you've got your piece and your stitch markers are going to be lining up over here. You're going to have two stitch markers lining up. And on the right side, so we're over here on the right side, we're going to take this little panel, mini panel that we've made, and we're going to fold it forward. Just like that. And it's going to meet up with this panel right here and that's going to be your front panel. So if you take a look, the stitches, because of the way we've done this, these stitches are actually going to be keeping in the same direction. So when it's on your shoulder moving to the front, it is going to look, all your stitches are going to be in the same direction. So it's going to fade away that we're connecting that there because your stitches are all going to be in the same direction. So you're not going to suddenly be turning directions right there at the edge of your shoulder. So you're going to grab your... Um, yarn needle at this point and we're going to do a stitch all the way across to connect this panel 
So you want to go ahead and pause here, get your yarn clipped. You are going to need enough that's going to allow you to go all the way down this new panel that we've just created here that's attached to our back panel. So for me, it's only two because this is a sample piece for the rest of you. It's going to be anywhere from four to eight, possibly, uh, maybe even nine. Um, you're going to have, so you're going to have to have enough yarn to work in that direction. If you prefer, you can slip stitch all the way down. That is an option for you. I'm going to show how you use the yarn needle in this particular tutorial, but if you're more comfortable with doing slip stitch all the way down your row, you can feel free to do that. I would say stay with the same exact hook that you've been using, this five millimeter, and work all the way down, and then you're going to clip and tie off at the end of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up with my yarn needle, and we'll meet back up in just a moment. And I did want to mention real quickly, over here where you completed this row that we're using as our foundation to work into to connect our two panels so that we have something nice and flat and all the way across, you're going to go ahead and bind off there at the end, obviously. I like to chain up two, clip my yarn, and then pull it down like that to bind off. So I do not my work. That's just something I do. So now we're going to be getting ready with our yarn needle. You're going to grab your yarn needle and enough yarn to make it all the way down, or you can choose to slip stitch all the way down. It's completely up to you. But you want to use a corresponding yarn color to what you've been using, obviously, so the stitch just fades away when you're connecting the two pieces. And I'm grabbing my yarn needle real quick. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and thread your needle with your yarn and then I just personally like to work from this side over here the right side going in towards the center towards the left so I like to work towards the left but you can do either it doesn't matter uh, we're all going to end with the same result you're going to connect this front panel and, and back panels together so if you take your piece and you fold it with your little new little two rows that you created more of the butterflies and you line this up just like so let's make sure I'm in camera you're going to be working in this manner right here so I'm going to grab I'm at the end of these two panels I'm gonna grab them and line them up I just like to stick my thumb or finger index finger right there into the we're at the squares here at the end so I just like to stick right down into there and then I'm going to look here and I'm going to count up on both of these one, two, and three. In that third stitch, that's where I'm going to insert my yarn needle. Just like that. And then you're going to pull on through. We can bind this off now or you can bind it off when you're, when you're finished. I prefer to sew in and hide that at the end. So I've got my work here. I've got the yarn needle has gone through. I'm over here in this direction in the back. So I'm going to take and I'm going to go back over here to this front panel. And I'm in these two loops right here. So I want to go into the next set. Right like that. And you're just going to continue to sew that on up. And you're going to work down going into each and every stitch. You might want to do two in some of your stitches. It's completely fine. It's really not a wrong way to sew up the project to connect it. You are going to find that this is all going to disappear in your work anyway. But you do want to do your best. That's why we made this row on this back right here. So that it's going to line up just like we did when we started out the panel. We want to make sure that this lines up. And we have worked in all those stitches. So I wanted to have corresponding colors so you could see that I'm going into each one. So that's one of the reasons why I left it the way I w did. But you're just going to work into each and every stitch. And as you go on down, you're going to end up meeting the end where this butterfly extra little panel that we created, where it ends. And that's where you're going to stop. And that's where you're going to find that you have a stitch marker here on the front panel. So these things should line up perfectly. That's why we marked both of them so that you would see exactly where you're stopping on this panel below on the front panel. So you're going to work all the way down going into each and every stitch and then we're going to meet back up at the end. We'll bind off and I'll show you how to sew up the side. 
And just for a little bit of extra help, I'm going to show that from a different angle for my newbies. You are going to be working basically doing like a whip stitch is what they call it, I believe. I just sew them all together. So you're going to go into this first stitch and then into the same exact corresponding stitch on the other side. And we don't want to grab a hold of this little yarn loop that we've got. We want to put that out of the way and you just want to pull through. And then I'm going to come, I've got my loop right there. I'm going to move it out of my way using my fingers. And then I'm going to come back in. And I'm just grabbing one little loop. And then I'm grabbing the corresponding loop on the other side, on the other panel. And you're just going to go right in there like that, pulling on through. And then same thing, I'm going to move my loop, my working yarn out of the way. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab a loop and then I'm going to go over and grab a corresponding loop on the other side. Just want to make sure that you're getting into both of those loops. Hopefully you can see. You just want to work into each one so that we have a nice even join. And then you're going to go ahead and continue all the way down. And you want to stop periodically and make sure you're not getting off track. So I like to just turn the work back into the position that I was originally working in and making sure everything's lining up because everything should stay in a nice clean line. You want these boxes that we've created, those to line up right there. So you just want to make sure that as you're sewing it up, you're not doing this too tight. You want to make sure that you're going in one little loop into each stitch, but you want to keep it where you don't want to pull down really hard on that and cinch it together. That is the main tip that I need to give you if you're brand new at doing this. Or if you don't typically sew things together, if you just make big large panel pieces or blankets and stuff, probably not too used to having to join two things together by sewing. So you just continue on down just in that same manner. You want to just grab a loop from each one and work on down until you meet up at the end over here. So you're just going to continue to work. Hopefully that little extra help I showed you guys like when I get to these tricky little spots I just grab a loop I don't worry about anything in particular I'm just trying to make sure that I'm connecting both of my panels together and if you take a look and kind of pull this apart you can see this is already sewn together take a look at that so these two things right here this is this is completely fading away in our project, you're not going to see anything. So just continue on down till you've sewn down this whole entire little panel that we created and attached it to your front panel. You're going to meet up with your stitch marker over here at the end. And that is where we want to make sure that the end of our additional panel is lined up with the stitch marker. So I'm going to make sure that we line up right there so that it's nice and even. So you're going to pause the video and continue on down. Okay, so now we're back and we're at the very end. We've met up with that stitch marker. And here is the end of my additional little panel that we added on. Hopefully you guys can see that. So the way that I handle this to make sure I get a nice clean corner is I go ahead and leave my stitch marker in. That's kind of like helping guide me. And I'm going to insert my yarn needle into that same stitch the stitch marker is coming out of. And then I'm going to look right here on my panel where I did the bind off. Let's move that out of the way. We're going to go right there where I did that bind off. I'm going to insert my yarn needle right there. So I'm coming in just behind this little knot that I made. And hopefully you guys can see that. There's a knot right there. Back it up just a little bit. So I come in right there. And that's where I'm going to do my last stitch to close off this. It's right there. Once I've sewn that through just one time, go ahead and remove that stitch marker and get it out of your way. And now I'm just going to go ahead and go through two more times into that same stitches. I want to go right there in the same exact stitches. And I just want to make sure I have a nice, firm, tight join right there at this end. And then I'm going to go ahead and slip slip the little yarn needle through anywhere behind my stitches and I'm going to do a bind off. I've, that's why I left this tail right here um, from when I finished my panel is I'm going to use that. I knot all of my projects. Um, sewing in ends has failed me a few times. So I go ahead and do a nice knot. I don't pull too tight because I don't want to cinch anything up. 
So I don't know if you guys can see. Let me try moving this out of the way. Maybe that's a little bit better, less busy. So I've got my yarn that I was working with to sew up. And then I've got the tail from when I finished that little panel that we created to connect. So I just go ahead and do two knots just like that. And then I'm going to clip my yarn that I was working with to sew up. And then I will sew in those ends and bind off a few more times. Um, the way that I do that just as kind of like a little tip and trick is I take my a smaller yarn or smaller crochet hook. And I'll just go into any little loop that's in that area and I'll pull up a loop and then I will chain twice so I do two chains and then I pull that all the way through and then I grab with my thumb and this is why my thumbnails always break and I pull down on that stitch and that creates another little knot and it'll hide away and then I can clip my yarn at that point so I'll do that a few places or sew in some of this tail and then I will do that and that will kind of prevent this piece from ever coming apart because I intend for things to get worn a lot and to be washed a lot especially if I'm doing something that's like for one of my little nieces so I just go ahead and knot it several times because I'm I'm assuming it's going to get some rough wear when I'm making something for them and even for myself so to show you that again I've just found a stitch that is very very close to where I'm working I just basically went to the very next one and I've inserted my crochet hook and I'm grabbing the tail and I'm pulling it up like a loop and then I'm gonna pull through doing a chain and I'm gonna pull through again doing a chain then I just pull it on through so I bring my tail all the way through and then I grab right here just above that chain and I s grab the tail and I pull it down. I use my nail to kind of work that right down and then I kind of stretch and stretch and the knot just hides away. And that is where I'm going to clip. I clip real close to that knot, just like so. Hopefully you guys can see this. And then I just go back and forth, rub them like that, and it disappears. So when you turn this over and you take a look, you cannot see that at all. There's, there's nothing there. And I'll do that over here on this side with this tail. I'll do the same exact thing. So now what we have, let's move everything out of the way, is a front and back panel that are connected. And I'm going to have to pause and move my, my camera up so you guys can see what I'm trying to show you on this mini version. So one second. So now if you take a look here, this is what we created with the little stitch work that we did. This is my front panel over here. This is the little mini panel that we created so working right here on our back panel moving forward. We did this so that we could connect it here to the front. So this is the shoulder essentially of your poncho. On all the sizes, you guys are going to have much larger ones. This is going to go quite a bit further over. But if I had done that on an adult size, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm talking about. So that's why I picked the child size to do. Um, and this is an experimental size. I've got to try it on still on a, one of my nieces. But what we have here is this is where our neck opening is right here. And we're going to be working in a manner. And I'm going to go ahead and, and try to do this real quick without having to change camera angles again. I'm going to... Grab my piece just like this. This is my shoulder, and I'm going to fold it. So for me, because I chose this color to be the front panel, if you take a look at it, over here to the left, this is where our neck goes in. And if you look at that, let me turn it like this, using my arm. The reason we did this little connection piece is this gives us a an actual opening for the neck. If we had just sewed this up, it would have been really tight and hard to get on, probably impossible to get on, but this gives us that extra stretch that we need to be able to actually put this on without having a very wide gaping neckline on it because this is meant for winter wear. So if you take a look at your piece, this is your back panel, whatever panel you've connected. Here's where the head's going to go. You've got more than enough room. And now what we're going to be doing is on the left side, because that's where our neck opening is, neckline, 
this is the side that we actually sew up. And we sew all the way down here to the end of our panel and we sew up this side. This side over here remains open. And this we're going to put a border all the way around right here. So the next thing you're going to do is just like you did right here in connecting these panels together, how we sewed those together, you're going to do the same exact thing over here on the side on the left side so you're going to go right here to where your neck opening begins the corner of your panel and you're going to connect these two i like to go ahead and do a stitch marker that way i don't get anything off track when i'm sewing up a side of a project so those are the corners and i know they're the corners if you take a look i'm counting up three one two and three on this back and then you can do the same this is your double crochet right here so you just find the top of that double crochet those two things together go ahead and mark them and you can do that on down your project making sure that you're keeping it so that when you end down here you've got your square you're always going to have a square in the corner on these and your last square over here so you take those two and you line them up and if you take a look then your butterflies line up on each side and you can always find that corner this is one of the reasons why I don't sew in the tails until the very end that helps mark that corner for me so I'm gonna go ahead and put in a stitch marker right there in the corner and I just make sure I'm right in the corner if you take a look at your stitches you'd be counting down three stitches here let me do that in camera one two and three and then on this side we're working with same one two and three go right there in the corner so I've marked the top corner over here and I've marked the bottom corner so you can go ahead and mark a few more times in here just make sure the main thing that you have to do is just make sure that your butterflies are lining up on both sides that is how you know that you're sewing it together properly so all those things are just going to line up together where you're not seeing them when it's lined up you won't see anything other than maybe like a little bit of an edge here so you're just going to sew all the way down this just like we did over here at the neckline and then we're going to meet back up and we're going to do the edge and here's a quick little tip trick for you guys since this side has these squares on it the way that i hold mine when i'm working into this is i do it two squares at a time so you can see i'm beginning down here to connect this together and I've got my fingers inside the squares to kind of stretch this apart just so I can see what I'm doing. So I just go through in the same manner all the way down and I'll just keep moving my fingers so that I am holding the sides kind of taut where I can see where I need to work. So this helps me to be able to connect them and keep them straight. And that's also why I pin them just so that also is like a safeguard against it. As you can see right here, it's lining up on both sides hopefully you can tell it's lining up really well so it helps me to keep this straight and keep everything lined up so that's how I go about doing this and I'll just move on down as I need to and you just keep picking up your stitches there's no right or wrong way to do this really you're just connecting them and that's the main goal is to make sure you get them nice and connected so you have a solid border or line over here on the side so now see I've worked up these two sets of squares so now I'm just going to go ahead and insert my fingers into the next set of squares because everything's nice and lined up I can work this way and this makes it go a little bit faster for me so that's that's one of the reasons why I prefer to do it and I just go through grabbing stitches and keep going in the same exact manner so that might help a lot of projects you don't have the the bonus of having something like this where it's exactly the same on the edges you know in a way that you can stick your fingers through easily so I take advantage of it on this one because it does make it go faster and we'll meet back up when you're finished all right so we are back and we have sewn up this side right here the left side of the poncho is completely sewn up now hopefully you guys can see that and we have our neck opening right here. We have our little panel that we created to connect the two right here. And when we fold this, just like this, lining up our bottom edge down here, 
we have created a really, really pretty asymmetrical poncho. When you put this on, it's going to wear at an angle. So you're going to have a point down here. So now what we're going to do is I've taken the neck lining right here, and this is where the smaller crochet hook is going to come into play. We're going to be attaching some yarn and just doing a simple peacoat right around this. I'll show you real briefly, and then we'll move right on to the puffy bouillon stitch that is going to be the rest of your border for this project. So it's going to go along the edges here at the end and it's going to go up the side. And I'll show you how to create that. This is your side opening on the right side. If you take a look here, it is completely open and that's how we want this to remain. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to work here at the neckline. So I'm going to lower my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we are back and we're down here low where you guys can see. So this is the neck opening of your poncho. Yours is going to be a little bit larger than this one right here that I have because of the way that I've done this for the tutorial. This is a smaller opening. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin by just picking any spot on here to start. I typically prefer to go, this is going to be the back panel over here. This is my back panel side. I prefer to go right here in this, essentially in this little corner that we created when we attached and created this additional little panel here, mini panel we'll call it. So I like to go right there in the corner of that to attach my yarn and start working. So we're going to do that. You can pick a different spot, but that's what I'm going to kind of show you how to do is in this corner. So we've got our yarn on our hook. I just did a little slip knot and I'm going to pull it through. So I just went into one of those little stitches and I'm going to do a single crochet to lock that down. I'm sorry, a chain to lock that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook right back in that same area. I'm in an elongated stitch essentially. So I'm just going to insert it right back in and I'm going to pull up a loop. And I'm going to let that tail fall to the back and I'm going to go ahead and pull through. So I'm doing a single crochet right there. And try not to split your yarn like I just did. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then pull that down nice and tight. And that's my first single crochet. So the way that I like to do this is I like to do four single crochets. And then on the top of the fourth, I like to do my um, peacoat stitch. So I've got one right here, one single crochet. And now I'm just going to move into the very next space that's available to me. So I'm crocheting around one of our chains that we have. And I'm going to do a single crochet. And now right here, this is one of our um, double crochets. And I'm just going to go right there into the top of that double crochet. And I'm just going to grab a loop and pull through and do another single crochet. Now I've made it here, I'm at a chain four space, so I'm gonna go ahead and go around that chain four space and do a single crochet. And now I'm going to chain, and I'm using my four millimeter hook, I'm going to chain up four, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm gonna find these two little bumps, basically, at the top of the single crochet, or on the side of the single crochet, and I'm gonna go through those two bumps, and I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull through. And then I'm going to grab this little peacoat that I've created and pull it backwards. And I'm going to pull through that loop that's on my hook. And that's going to form our first little peacoat. You can do this by chaining up three or four. I'm wanting to kind of um, have a little bit larger of a peacoat on this particular piece. So I'm doing four. So now I'm immediately going to go right back around that same chain four space. And I'm going to do a single crochet just like that. I'm going to go back around it and I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to go back around it again and do a single crochet. And I've got enough space to go one more time so I'm going to go back around it again and do a single crochet. And now I'm going to do my peacoat so I'm going to chain up four in my case or you can chain up three. Either way. And I'm going to come back down here, and there's two little bumps. Hopefully you can see those. It, it looks like a V. If you look at it, it's like a little V right here, like an upside-down V. That's where I'm going under. I'm just slipping under both of those. And now I've got three little loops on my hook. So I'm going to grab, and I'm going to pull through those two. 
and then I'm going to grab and I'm going to pull through these last, this last one. And that forms another little peacoat. So I'm going to continue to do this on around. Now I've met up where I've got one of my butterfly fans going on. So I'm going to go right there in that large loop and I'm going to do a single crochet. Oops. Try not to lose your yarn like me. And it looks like I have enough room to do one more. So I'm going to do one more. You just kind of want to look at your project. You don't want to stretch anything out. So now I'm going to do my third one. I'm over here to another chain space. Get down in camera. So I'm over here at another chain space. So I'm doing my third single crochet just into that chain space. Now I'm going to do another single crochet in that chain space. And this is my fourth. So I'm separating my peacoats by four single crochets. And on the top of the fourth single crochet is where I'm doing the chain up. And I'm chaining up four in my case. And I'm coming back down here and going under those two little bumps. And I'm grabbing my yarn and I'm pulling through. And I'm grabbing and I'm pulling on through the working one. And try not to lose it. It can be a little fiddly. I'm losing that one left and right. I'm splitting. This, this particular yarn is pretty easy to split. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue on down. I'm going to do a single crochet. A single crochet and a single crochet for a total of four single crochets. So you want to do four of those. And then you're going to chain up three or four depending on what you want. If you do three, this is the size of your bee code I'll show you. It's going to come out a little smaller. Let me go ahead and do a single crochet to lock that down real fast and I'll show you. Here's number two. So I'm going to pull up my yarn just a little bit so I can stop and show you. So my chain four peacoats and my chain three peacoats, that's the difference. So the chain four is just a slightly larger little bump that it's creating, a little peacoat. So you can kind of tell the difference. So if you want them to be smaller, you're going to chain up three. If you want them to be a little bit larger like mine, you're going to chain up four. So you're going to continue on around until you meet back up on this side of your neckline area and then you'll just do a slip stitch to finish that off. So you're going to go all the way around and then you'll slip stitch right here into the first single crochet that you made and you'll bind off at that point. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And we're going to go ahead and continue on round, and then I'll meet back up to show you what I'm talking about here. So now we're back around here to the beginning. I've got uh, my chain or my sing four single crochets and I'm going to do my peacoat right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the peacoat just like we've been doing on a round. And instead of doing a single crochet once I complete that peacoat, I'm just going to go over here into this single crochet, the very first one. Hopefully you guys can see that. I did pick an awfully light yarn to do on a white background, so I apologize. And I'm just going to slip stitch it. So I'm not doing another single crochet. I'm just simply doing a slip stitch to finish that off. And now I'm going to go ahead and clip my yarn and pull that on through so I can show you guys. So I just slip stitched it over. And that's how I ended it. So I did my peacoat like normal, but instead of doing a single crochet right after it, I just did a slip stitch. So now we have the peacoat all the way around the collar area of our poncho. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on down here to the bottom of our poncho. And we're going to just choose a corner to start in. This is my open side, so this is the right side of your poncho right here. I'm going to start working on the back panel in the corner. My yarn and I'm going to begin doing the puffy bullion stitch and that's what I'm going to be showing you guys next. So go ahead and get your yarn ready and we're going to go ahead and insert it here and I'll show you how to start. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and do our puffy bullion border and what I've got right here is my finished project, um, the one that's in the thumbnail and I am going to begin working on the right side. So that's the side that is open 
Um, it's the side that you did not sew up when you were doing all your sewing in, sewing up of the edges and all to form the poncho. So you did not sew up here. We're going to begin right here in this corner. And the way that I have done this is I'm doing just a few stitches and then a peacoat right here. And then I'm working a few more single crochets. These are all single crochets along this row. Single crochet. And then I start the puffy bullion. I am doing an altered version of the puffy bullion that works for this pattern. So I will show you that on this. And you're going to be working those bullions working up in the butterfly right here and framing it with these bullions. And then you'll continue on down. You'll do some more single crochets, a peacoat, and those peacoats are lining up in the center of those squares that we have. So that's how we've worked this out. And then along this edge over here, which is the open edge, you're going to be doing single crochets, a puffy bullion, single crochets, puffy bullion, and I'm stretching these out with nine single crochets so that they're not so close together, but you're still bringing the same look that you have over here on the bottom of the poncho. You're bringing that up here along the right side. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I am switching over to another panel that I've been working so that you can see what I'm doing better because I was a little worried with the yarn I was using that it would be hard to see these puffy bullion. So we're switching over to some more vibrant colors and be a little bit easier for you to see where you're gonna work. And so again, I'm on the right side, the open side of the project, and I'm going to count up. I'm right here at the corner, and if you look, this is the bottom of your poncho. So I'm right here at the corner. I'm going to count up three stitches because these are chains right here. So I'm going to count one, two, and three chains. That's where I'm going to insert my hook, and it's at this point that you're going to be going down a hook size. So you want to go down from the five millimeter that you have been using you want to go ahead and use a four millimeter here. If you don't have a four millimeter, a 4.25 will work. A four and a half will work. You're just going to want to decrease your hook size to work this. I do recommend going down a full hook size though. So I have my slip knot and I've brought it through that loop that I had my, um, or that chain that I had my hook inserted in. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that down by taking my yarn, tail and all, and doing a chain. And then I'm going to let my tail fall to the back, separate that, and I'm just going to go right back down into that same exact stitch, and I'm going to do a single crochet. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a single crochet right here into this chain space. This is technically our chain one space. We're going to do a single crochet right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain up three and do a peacoat. So I'm going to chain up three. I'm going to go and find these two little bumps that are in the um, front of that single crochet. And I'm going to go underneath those. So hopefully you can see that. I'm going to try to bring it up closer. So I'm going into these little bumps that are right here in the front. You'll see too. It looks like a V to me when you're looking at it um, in a working position. So I'm going to go under that V, I'm going to grab my yarn, and I'm going to pull through those two loops, and then I'm going to pull through the loop that's on my hook, and that forms your peacoat. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet right here on the top of this double crochet. I'm just going to go ahead and do a single crochet, and now I'm going to do three more single crochets until I get over here to this first double crochet on the butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead and do three more single crochets. One, two, and three. And that third one is going to go right there into the single crochet from the previous row. Go right in there like that. And now if you take a look at your work, you're at your first double crochet. And that's where we're going to do our first puffy bullion. So you're going to go ahead and insert your hook and do a single crochet. And then you are going to need to chain one and you are going to wrap your yarn and you're going to go back down the same space, same exact stitch, and you're going to do a double crochet, just like so. And now we are going to elongate the stitch that we have on our hook, or I'm sorry, this loop we have on our hook. We're going to pull that up some because this is going to help us get through all of the pieces of the puffy bullion that I'm about to show you to make. 
Um, you're going to wrap your yarn like this, and we're going to be working around this double crochet we just created right here. So we're going to work around this double crochet, and we're going to wrap our yarn, insert our hook right here around that double crochet. We're going to go right underneath it like that, and we're going to grab our yarn and pull up a loop. And we want to pull it to the same height as this loop that we elongated that was our working loop that was on our hook. So we're going to pull it up like that, and we're going to do this a total of five times. So this was my first one, and you can use your finger to hold your stitches in place. So now I'm going to do this again right here, going around that same exact double crochet right there. I'm going right around it, and I'm pulling up my second loop. I'm going to do this a third time, going around it again, going into that same exact spot, pulling up a third time, and I'm going to go around it again, and I'm going to go back down in here. Each time I'm wrapping my yarn, this is my fourth time, and I'm going to wrap my yarn again, and I'm going to go in here yet again around that same double crochet and pull up a fifth time. So I've got all of this on my hook now. So I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to turn my hook down where it is facing towards my project and I'm going to pull through all of those loops. So to show you that, you want to make sure that you're not pulling tightly on anything and you just want to grab and pull through all those loops. Of course I'm getting hung up. Hold on one second. And the reason that is happening to me is because I have let this get too tight when I was pulling up loops. So I'm going to pull that back out and show you guys again. I apologize, but I'm going to elongate my loop, and this is why this is important. And I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to do pull up a loop, wrap again, insert again, pull up a loop, wrap again, insert again. This is my third time. Pull up a loop, wrap again, insert again, pull up a loop, wrap again, insert again, and pull up a loop. That's five times I've done that. Now I'm going to grab and I'm going to be able to pull through all five loops or all of those loops on my hook. I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull through and do a chain. And then I'm going to pull down nice and tight in the back, toward the back, and then I'm going to be able to come over here, right here into the very next double crochet. I'm just going to do a single crochet. Just like that. You push this forward and you can start to see your puffy bullion. So now I've got one single crochet right there. I'm going to do two more single crochets, one in the top of each of these next stitches. So here's one, and here's my second, and here is my third. So I'm doing three single crochets, not pulling anything tightly. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to wrap, wrap my yarn around my hook, and I'm going to go back into that same exact stitch and pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two to do my double crochet. So I'm creating this space that we're going to work in. Now I'm going to elongate the loop that is on my hook, and I'm going to grab my yarn, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go around this double crochet we created a total of five times. So I'm going to pull up a loop going to wrap my yarn again. I'm going to insert into that big opening that we made. We're going to go around that double crochet, pulling up a loop. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go down here again into that same space and grab my yarn and pull up a loop. And I'm going to do that one more time. And I have all these loops here on my hook. Now I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull through all those loops. Now I'm going to grab my yarn again, and I'm going to pull through doing a chain, and then I'm going to take my working yarn here in the back, and I'm going to pull it down nice and tight. Oops. Now we're going to go over here. We're in this stitch right here currently. We're going to move over here to this stitch and do a single crochet. And when you push your puffy bull yarn forward and kind of puff it, it makes these really cute puffs. So now I've got one single crochet, and each time I'm going to be doing three single crochets and then a puffy bullion on top of that third. So there's my second single crochet, and right here I'm doing my third single crochet, and now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to wrap my yarn, and I'm going to go back around into that same exact stitch, and I'm going to do a double crochet, 
just like so. Now I'm going to elongate the stitch that's on my hook. I'm just going to pull up and I'm going to wrap my yarn and I'm going to go into this space that we created right here. That's that double crochet we just created. I've got my hook under. We're going to go into that and we're going to pull up a loop and pull it as tall as we have this over here. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go in that same space for a second time, pulling up a loop. I'm going to wrap again, go into that same space for a third time, pulling up a loop. Wrap again, go into that same space for a fourth time, pulling up a loop. Wrap again, go into that same space pulling up a loop for the fifth and final time. So I have all of this on my hook. And now I'm going to grab my yarn. I'm going to turn my hook down towards my project and I'm going to pull through all of those loops. So now I'm going to wrap and pull through doing a chain and then I'm just going to pull down tight in the back. So I'm grabbing this working yarn here and pulling it tight. And now we're going to go over here into this. We're in the chain space that's at the point of our butterfly so we're in that chain two space and I'm just going to go ahead and do a single crochet right there into that space and then if you push your puffy bullion forward that little puff stitch you're creating it looks like that and now we're going to work down the other side so I've done one single crochet so I'm going to go into this first double crochet right here and I'm going to do a single crochet that's my second and then I'm going to go into this very next one and make my third single crochet. So I'm just doing one single crochet in the top of each of those double crochets. Now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to wrap my yarn and I'm going to go back into that same exact space right here. And I'm going to pull up a loop and do my double crochet. Now I'm going to elongate my stitch or my uh, yarn that's on the hook. And I'm going to wrap my yarn and I'm going to go back down here into that double crochet that we just created and work around it. So I'm going to pull up a loop. That's number one. I'm going to wrap again, insert again into that same space, pulling up a loop. That's number two. I'm going to wrap again, going back down here into the same space, working around that double crochet and pulling up a loop. That's my third. I'm going to wrap again. Go back down here around that double crochet again, pulling up a loop. That's my fourth. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go back down here one last time, pulling up a loop. That's my fifth. So I have all this on my hook. I'm going to grab my yarn, turn my hook down towards my project, and pull through all of those. Now I'm going to grab the yarn again and pull through that loop, creating a chain. Now I'm going to take this working yarn back here and I'm going to pull down tight. And now I'm going to go right here into the very next double crochet and work a single crochet right there in the top of that stitch. Now I'm going to do a second double crochet or a second single crochet and a third single crochet. Now I'm going to do my puffy bullion again so I'm going to chain I'm going to wrap my yarn. I'm going to go in the same exact stitch right here, same one, and I'm going to do a double crochet just like that. Now I'm going to elongate that loop that's on my hook and I'm going to wrap my yarn. I'm going to go back down here into the space we created and I'm going to work around that double crochet again. I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to do that a total of five times. So that was my first. So I'm going to wrap again, go in there again. I'm right around that post basically that we've created. Here's the second time. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go back down around it for a third time pulling up a loop. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go back down around it again for a fourth. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to go back down around it again for a fifth time. So you got all that. You don't want to let this get too tight. That's why I keep grabbing and holding it with my finger as I'm working because I want to keep it nice and loose in here or otherwise you have to fight to pull through the stitches just like I did the first time. So I'm going to pull through. So I wrap my yarn and I pulled through a loop. Now I'm going to wrap again and I'm going to pull through making a chain. And now I'm going to pull down nice and tight. So I'm pulling towards the back side. So if you take a look at that you can kind of see what that looks like right there. Hopefully that's showing up nice and clear in the camera. So now I'm going to do a single crochet right here. We are at this, the um, end of this little section that we were working. 
So I'm going to go ahead in the very next stitch and do a single crochet. Now I'm going to do a single crochet in the very next stitch. And now we're getting over here working towards our little boxes that we've created. So I've got two single crochets. I'm going to do a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my sixth one right here in the center in that chain one space. I'm going to chain up three. You can also chain up four. And we're going to do the peacoat. So we're going to go back and we're going to find those two little bumps that are at the top or the front of the single crochet. And we're going to go underneath those. I'm going to grab my yarn. I'm going to pull through those two loops and the loop that's on my hook, forming our peacoat. Then I'm going to do a single crochet right here in the very next double crochet. And that ends your repeat. So you're going to continue on down. You're going to do a single crochet. You're going to do a total of five of those. And then you'll start your puffy bullion again. Because we'll be over there. I've got three, four, and then five. And then we'll start our puffy bullions again going in the same exact manner. We're going to be working up this side, meeting up here at the point, making sure we have a puffy bullion there. And then we're going to be working down the other way. Then we separate those by five single crochets, a six single crochet with a peacoat on top of it five single crochets and then we start all over and you just continue on down the same exact manner all the way down until you meet up to your other side you will then continue on around your project and you will come back and you will be meeting me up when you're at the side panel on the right side that is not sewn up and that's where we're going to be doing our single crochets and puffy bullions and I'll show you all how to do those as well so you're going to go ahead and pause the video here. I'll put in a rewind spot to show you how to go back and do this puffy bullion and work your rest of the way up. So I will mark that in this video for you. But we're going to go ahead and move on for myself. I'm going to be moving on and showing you the side portion and how you add the um, single crochets and puffy bullions that are separated by nine single crochets. So I'm going to move on and show you that, but I will mark it so you can rewind and finish out your project. All right, so we are back, and you should be actually coming around with still your working yarn on, not having to clip anything. I'm changing colors to show you in a contrasting color, so you can see that we're working on the side section. If you're just scrolling through the, or trying to fast forward through the tutorial, and trying to find your marked spots to start. So we're going to go ahead, and if you have your working yarn on your hook, the only thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to come up here, you're going to meet at your corner, and then you're going to do two single crochets right there into that corner. So just make sure that when you're coming around, when you get to the edge here, just do a second single crochet right there in that corner. And then you are going to go ahead and do a single crochet. And you're going to do a total of five, I'm sorry, six single crochets right here along the side. So I've got one more there. So I've got two so far. Here's three working right into that side of that double crochet. Then I'm going to come right here and do a fourth. We're going to come right here and do a fifth. And now here's my sixth single crochet. And this is just for the beginning of these rows. When you get around to the other side, when you've worked all the way around, you're going to have six single crochets before you meet the corner. So that's the, the rest of the time you're going to be doing nine single crochets. So we're going to come right here and we're going to do a seventh single crochet right around this, this chain work right here. And now we're going to do our puffy bullion here. So I've done a single crochet, the seventh one, and now I'm going to chain one. And just like we were doing before, I'm going to wrap my yarn and I'm going to go back in this. We have a whole area to go in now, so we're working in this space. I'm going to do a double crochet and now I'm going to elongate that stitch and I'm going to wrap my yarn 
and I'm going to go back down here into this area that we're working in. We're going to go right around that double crochet we created and pull up a loop. That's time number one. Just like before, we're going to be doing this five times. So here's number two. Wrap. Go back in that same exact space, working around that double crochet. Here's three. We're going to wrap again, keeping it nice and loose. We want to keep this pulled up. Here is number four. And we're going to wrap again and go through a fifth time. Here is number five. So now, just like before, we're going to grab our yarn and pull through all those loops. When you keep it nice and loose like that, it's easy to pull through all those loops that are on your hook. Now I did a chain, and I'm going to grab my working yarn and pull it down tight, just like that. So now I'm going to come right here into this, this uh, I guess you would say it's chain work right here. It looks like a double crochet. So we're going to go ahead and do a single crochet right there into that space. And now we're going to do nine single crochets on down the side of our project. So there's number one. Now I'm going to do number two in that same exact space. I'm going to do number three right here. I'm going to do number four here into this open chain work. I'm going to do five there in that open chain work. I'm going to do the sixth one right here into this uh, stitch. I'm going to do number seven right here into this open chain work. I'm going to do number eight into that open chain work. And then I'm coming right here. I'm going to do number nine right there. And now if you take a look at your work, you're lined up with one of your butterflies. So we're going to do a... 10th single crochet right there into that space lining up with our butterfly now we're going to do our puffy bullion on the top of this one so we're going to chain one we're going to wrap our yarn going back down here into the same exact space so going right there we're going to pull up a loop and do our double crochet so we're going to pull through two and pull through two now we're going to elongate that loop that we have on our hook we're going to wrap our yarn again. We're going to go into the space that we created right here. We're going to go right there into that space and we're going to start pulling up our loop. So I've got my first one. I'm going to wrap again. I'm going to do a second one right there into that same, just like we were doing along the bottom edge. So there's two. Wrap again. Here's three. Wrap again. Here's four. And wrap again. Let me untangle my yarn. Wrap again. And here is number five. So I'm going to pull that up. We've got all of this on our hook. We're going to grab our yarn and pull through all of that. Now we're going to grab our yarn and do our chain just like before. And then we're going to pull down nice and tight with our working yarn. Now here is right here in this little chain work where it kind of looks like a double crochet when you're looking at it from this angle you're going to go ahead and do your single crochet to lock that down and try not to lose all your loops like I just did so now we're going to pause if you take and squish your bullion stitches to the front you get that you make them puff towards you and that's what you want whatever's going to be the right side of your project and that's what we're working on this is the right side of the project. We want to make sure we puff them out. Sometimes they'll want to puff towards the back or push towards the back when we do the pull down. So you just might have to straighten them out. So that is all you're doing. So here on the side, you connected in. You would have your same working yarn. So this would all just connect up and be the same color. Or if it's the mandala and it's transitioning colors, you would not have to attach any more yarn. Because you're going to work along the bottom edge and then you're going to come to where you're working right here at the corner doing two single crochets then you do six single crochets and then a seventh is where you do your puffy bullion and if you look at that when you do it that way these bullions line up with every other butterfly so we're just spacing them out so you're going to do nine single crochets then in the tenth you're going to do a puffy bullion so your nine single crochets is what's separating and giving you that space in between. And your bullions are going to line up where they're going right here on the row with your butterflies. 
So you're going to continue on the same way. You're going to work all the way around the open edge of your project. And then when you come around to the end, you're just going to be able to slip stitch into this right here, the um, beginning of your bottom row. And then you will be finished with your project. You can cut your yarn, loop and tie off, bind off as however you wish. Sew in your ends and you'll be done. So hopefully this tutorial has been very helpful for you. I'm going to put rewind spots for this section since I'm trying to cut down the time on this. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you as always for watching. I appreciate all the support. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please leave a comment below. Please make sure that you've liked the video and please subscribe. Thank you.